I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Please may we turn in our Bibles to the book of Colossians chapter 3. And we shall be reading from verses 1 up to verse 17. Colossians chapter 3. This is the word of the Lord. Since then you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things, for you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways, in the life you once lived, but now you must rid yourself of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge, in the image of its creator. Here there is no Greek or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, by barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. Over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom and as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him just so far. Let us ask the Lord for His blessing. Let us pray. O oh Lord, we thank You for Your Word that we have just read. Thank you for this wonderful privilege that we may come into your holy presence this evening to worship you. Pray that you will come to us this evening, O oh Lord. May your word come to us with power. Please help your servant now in preaching and in exposing the glories of Christ set forth here in your word before us. We pray that you will give us hearts, O oh Heavenly Father, that are humble, that are fertile ground, so that as the rain fell among the earth throughout today, your word may fall into our hearts, and that it may produce fruitfulness. And we ask for this message, Christ Jesus, who is our Savior. Amen. Amen. And so, as we come to this concluding part of this letter of the Apostle Paul to the church in Colossae, I've considered, perhaps, what is it that the Apostle wanted this little church to know and to understand. And so I've entitled the sermon this evening, Christian Liberty, the freedom that we as believers have in Christ our Savior. Now, of course, we didn't just get to this portion. We didn't just get to since then. Did you notice those words? 
since then. Which means there is a lot that has come before. A lot that the apostle has been delivering, exposing, and giving to the church in Colossae. And we've considered just a little bit of an introduction about a month ago. Just the grace and the peace that belongs to all believers in Christ who is our Savior. There are other important truths, such as the supremacy of the Lord Jesus Christ. Did you notice that? In verse 15 of chapter 1, we read, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation, for by him all things were created, things in heaven and things on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together, and he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile himself to all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. And we know that this is true. Here is the evidence before us this evening. And so as the Apostle Paul then concludes this letter to the church in Colossae, and not only to the church in Colossae, but to the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, he calls our attention to a couple of very important gems. If we had time this evening, if we were at a conference, there's a lot that is set before us here in this book. Not only did he draw our attention to the supremacy of Christ, he drew our attention to the mystery of the gospel that is Christ in you. He drew our attention to the momentous struggle that we as the people who live on this earth have against our threefold enemy, the devil, the world, but most importantly and most fundamentally our indwelling sin. The struggle in ourselves. Now whether this is because of ideology, whether this is because of our culture, whether this is because of our background, how we grew up, and in this particular church of course he speaks about tradition, he speaks about the Jewish ways of doing things, he speaks about philosophy and all of these other things that distract us. They draw our attention away from the truth. The one source which should be our focus. And this is the blessed state of believers who we truly are in Christ because of what he has done. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your heart on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above and not on earthly things. And so the Lord helping us this evening, I wish for us to consider three important truths. Number one, the battle of the mind. Number two, the putting on and the putting off. The putting to death and the putting on of the new self. And lastly, the blessed state of the believers. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved. And so we shall look at them that as our third point. Let us come then to the first point, the battle 
of the mind. Now the battle of the mind is where the war on this earth is waged. Because the devil is very subtle. The devil is very devious. But he is resolute in his enmity against God and his enmity against us. And therefore he fights the fight in the mind. And our poor young people, they are not equipped. They do not understand what is facing them. In fact, except for those who are in Christ, nobody is equipped to fight the battle of the mind against the devil. It is not possible. He is far more powerful than you are. He knows a lot more than you do. He walked in the presence of the true and living God in heaven. He knows the history. And so he's a cunning and formidable opponent in the battle of the mind. And we read here that the Apostle Paul directs these Colossian believers, the church of Jesus Christ. He says, set your mind on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. What marvelous things are they? And I am tempted to actually uh, divert and have a look at what those things are, but we don't have time this evening. What I want to do is focus on the heart, our own hearts. Because you see, the Bible uses this word, the word of heart, and the word of mind interchangeably. Did you notice that? Uh, uh, Paul says, set your hearts on things above. And then in the second verse he says, set your mind on things above. And so the heart and the mind are closely linked. The heart is the creaturely equivalent. The heart in man is the creaturely equivalent of God's own heart. And we read in the Bible that the activities of the heart are thinking, they are planning, the affections, and the desires. These all flow from the heart. It's very important. It is the invisible part in man that is a seat of all those activities. The Lord says to his disciples, in Matthew chapter 15, verse 18 to 20, we read, sorry, about the activity of the heart. He says to his disciples, but the things that come out of the mouth come from the heart, and these make a man unclean, for out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, and slander. These are what make a man unclean. But eating with, wash, with unwashed hands does not make him unclean. And so we are commanded then to guard our hearts. Proverbs 4 verse 23 says, Above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. And so, it is no small matter then in our homes to be supervising our children and the kind of content that they're consuming in the world digital with their friends in school or whenever they are out there but to guard our hearts above all else because it is the wellspring of life.
So how do we do this? When we set our hearts on things above and not on things below. Because the things above are eternal. The things above are glorious. The things above, they build us up. The things above are what we look forward to. It is the life that we look forward to living with Christ. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. And so as believers, as members of his body, as those who have been called by his holy calling, who have been made part of a family, who have been reconciled to God through Christ, this is true of us. This is what we truly are. And so we are then to set our minds not on things on earth, but on the things that are above. Let us move on to our second point. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to the earthly nature. And of course, we're not saying here that believers should be the kind of people that are not concerned at all about the things on the earth. Of course, we have to provide for our families, we have to work hard, we have to raise our children, and we have to honor the Lord. But in doing that, know that there are hindrances. There is a mighty battle that you yourself have to fight. And the gospel equips us for this mighty battle, the putting to death. Things that belong to the earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, greed, which is idolatry. Now we may not ordinarily think that these are issues for us. And <laughs> you know what has happened with COVID has actually exposed us, and I'm talking about all people throughout the world, for exactly who we are. The Lord has exposed us for exactly who we are. And I think that, you know, with the developments that are happening, initially we were quite shocked. People didn't know what to do, you know. Death was coming to the entire world and we were all going to be wiped out. And gradually, you know, beginning to, to now emerge, beginning to say, okay, this is how this particular pandemic, this particular situation can, can actually be handled. But if you look at the patterns, if you look at the number of cases that have been reported to the police stations, if you look at what is happening throughout the world, presidents are being changed. belongs to the earthly nature, the evil desires, the greed, sexual immorality, the impurity, and all of those remain. And these are unfitting for those who belong to God. These are not part of the nature of the new man who has been created in Christ. As we read in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, therefore whoever is in Christ, he is a new creature. He no longer has the earthly nature. 
And the heart of the matter is man's heart. And it is only the Lord God who can change man's heart. As we read in Ezekiel chapter 36, and I wish to just quickly read this for you as an illustration of the mighty power, the working, the spirit of the Lord in man's heart to change it. In Ezekiel 36 verse 24, the prophet says, For I will take you out of the nations. I will gather you from all countries and bring you back into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. You will live in the land I gave your forefathers. You will be my people and I will be your God. I will save you from all your uncleanness. I will call for the grain and make it plentiful and will not bring famine upon you. I will cleanse the fruit of the trees and the crops of the field so that you will no longer suffer disgrace among the nations because of famine. Then you will remember your evil ways and wicked deeds and you will loathe yourselves for your sins and detest detestable practices. I want you to know that I am not doing this for your sakes, declares the Sovereign Lord. Be ashamed and disgraced for your, for your conduct, O house of Israel. And this is the rebuke to the Lord's people. And it is only in Christ where we are made new, where we are recreated. where we take on the new man and we make it our habit we make it our habit to put on the new man do you see that? the putting off, rid yourself of all these things anger, rage, malice, slander and filthy language from your lips don't lie to each other since you have taken off your old self with these practices and have put on the new self which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator the battle for the mind is won only in christ which brings us then to our third point here there's no greek or jew circumcised or uncircumcised Barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. And our concluding point, then, brothers and sisters, is this. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, with kindness, with humility with gentleness and with patience. This is our true estate. But of course as Christians we are not yet perfect. We are not yet in glory. We are still engaged in this mighty battle. And therefore we have to be instructed bear with each other forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another forgive as the Lord forgave you without forgiveness it's impossible to have peace 
you know, if you were, if you were still setting out, you know, on, on your journey to, 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 to be married, you know, by the Lord's grace, I, I will be married now, sure, in December, 19 years. Yes, 19 years. My wife will kill me if I forget. <laughs> For forgetting the date. 19 years in December. We got married in 2001. So, pretty certain, 19 years. And, you know, one of the lessons that, you know, I've learned, you know, is that as believers, you have to learn to forgive. Because without forgiveness, there's no peace. And it's impossible where two sinners live for you not to upset one another because we're not perfect yet. And so forgiveness is a duty that we have as believers bearing with one another. It's a duty that we have. And so if you come to our church and you're saying, hey, but I don't like this music, man. You know, when I go to church, I like to feel. But there's this, but there's that, but there's that. There are many things that you will not like about your brother or your sister or your fellow believer. And the Lord instructs us. Bear with one another. Forgive one another, whatever grievances. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And above all else, put on love, which binds all of these beautiful, glorious, wonderful virtues together in perfect unity. Compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Because as members of the body we have been called to peace. And be thankful. And we are to immerse ourselves in this word of Christ as we teach and admonish one another. Now living in peace, being gentle, being humble does not mean lack of discipline. It doesn't mean that it is free for all. No, for the sake of peace, let us let it go. No. We are to stand firm and teach and admonish one another with all wisdom and understanding of Christ. And when we come together to worship, to be joyful, to sing psalms and hymns, spiritual songs with gratitude in our hearts. Whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to the Father, because He has freed us. We are free to enjoy all of these things as believers because of Christ. And this is the evidence. His body broken for us. His blood shed on the cross for us. Raised from the dead by the Holy Spirit. Seated in the heavenly realms at the right hand of God. Ruling and governing all things until he comes to fetch those who are his possession. And this is what we are if you belong to Christ. 
then this is your table. This is where your place is. So set your mind on things above and not on earthly things. Let us pray. A glorious Heavenly Father, O oh Lord, we thank you for your word that unburdens us. Thank you, Lord, for the freedom that we have in Christ. We thank you, O oh, oh Heavenly Father, for the gospel that works so powerfully in us. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of the Spirit. Thank you that you have made us new creatures in Christ and that you have given it to us that we may have compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, love, forgiveness for one another as your people. We ask, O oh Lord, that you will give us grace so that these may be increasing qualities in us. And we pray that this may be to your glory and to your honor. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.